Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron Durop. How much time does it take to prepare an entire adventuring campaign area, complete with a town, outlying settlements, a bit of political intrigue among factions, a sizable dungeon filled with monsters and magic items, as well as encounters for all of the surrounding wilderness? Last weekend, I did it in just 12 hours, and with the help of the world-building tools and random tables in Ben Milton's new Kickstarter, Knave 2nd Edition, I'm going to show you how you can do this as well. To start with, we need to know the general terrain of the region our players are going to explore. Rolling on the Wilderness Region table returns a result of Riverland. Since I've been reading about the biodiversity of the African Rift Lakes lately, that's where my mind immediately went. Lots of canyons and winding, conjoining rivers that cut through them. So. Wakanda. We need a map of the area, so let's doodle one on a sheet of office paper, colorize it in Photoshop, and layer a hex grid over it, and our map is complete. I placed a town in the center of the map with a few outlying settlements and a few interesting looking places that are hard to get to. We don't really know what they are just yet, but we do know that they are on the map. Since I was already drawing inspiration from the African Rift Valley, maybe this Neolithic looking yurt can be some hyena folk or gnolls. With the map sorted, the next thing we need to tackle is a dungeon complex. For a suitable dungeon crawl, we likely need three dungeon levels and about nine rooms per level. Still pulling from that initial inspiration of the African Rift Valley and mashing it together with prompts from the dungeon form, dungeon room, and dungeon status tables, which return vault, aviary, and flooded respectively, this dungeon seems to be a complex left over from an ancient knoll civilization, recently exposed after a nearby river's flooding event. In fact, water can still be seen trickling into the complex below. Next, we need a terrible monster that is trapped at the bottom of the dungeon and waiting to be released, either by the player characters or some knoll barbarians or even some treasure hunters who are too ignorant to know better. Rolling on the various monster description tables returns the prompts Rooster, Musk, Chanting, Scorpion Tail, Many-Legged, Anti-Magic, Manipulate, and Deformity. Therefore, a scorpion-tailed, anti-magic emanating, four-taloned giant rooster named Talonsting is trapped at the bottom of the complex. As for the dungeon rooms themselves, we can make a Legend of Zelda-style layout with a bunch of interconnected squares and join the rooms and levels together as we work through some rolled prompts. To determine the contents of each room, we can again roll on the random dungeon tables to generate ideas while keeping in mind that the lower levels of the dungeon are likely more flooded and nasty. For example, the prompts Salon and Torn Clothes from the dungeon rooms and room details table might illustrate a derelict sitting area. It also makes sense for water to flow into here from another nearby room thanks to that room's prompts. As a result, we can describe this sitting room as the floor has collapsed in the corner and water pours in from room six, washing over the cave-in and into the depths below. The once beautiful furniture is now molded and tattered. Ruined clothing is strewn about the flotsam. If the players drop through the collapsed floor, they will fall past a bronze gate, some 40 feet down, which is an entry into level two, and continue falling until they splash into a dark pool of water in a bath on level three. We can continue filling out the dungeon in this way and connect up the dungeon map with level changes, doorways, and passages as the lore of the dungeon pieces itself together. Next, the players need a relatively safe flop house for their characters to rest in after returning from this dungeon. But the town also needs a bit of faction turmoil to keep the town from feeling too safe. To that end, we can roll again on Knave's faction and NPC tables to get a royal chieftain of the village who has a militant ideology and presses nearby homesteads into paying him tribute. We can give him a magic weapon he uses to declare his birthright of his authority and generate it by rolling on the weapons table and then determine its magical enchantment by using these spell generation tables. Doing so returns a magic weapon called the Blue Amber Axe of Commanding Smoke, which strikes fear into those who see it wielded in combat. 
The chief's political rival in the village is the Brilliant Skull Cult, also rolled from the faction table, and the prompts Light and Skull on the Divine Magic and Divine Symbols tables. Another roll on the Spell Generation tables, as well as the Miscellaneous Items table, creates the cult's magic item, Penderball's Cup of the Wretched Strangling Spores, a magic incense dish the secretive inner circle of this religion uses to absorb thoughts of their unsuspecting victims through an incense burn ritual. With the village and the dungeon complete, we need to start bulking out all the hexes and placing everything into the map. Recently, I've drifted away from using six-mile hexes for hex crawls and have begun favoring a more loose and conceptual half-day travel hex, where distance is more arbitrary and more easily justifies adding more interesting and meaningful fixed encounters to each individual hex. To do this, we can use the Wilderness Structures, Traits, and Themes table for each hex on the map. For example, in Hex 9, the tables return Wizard Tower, Blighted, and Combat for prompts, so perhaps there's a ruined tower on the riverbank with gnolls outside and lost treasure hunters inside who are about to have a violent showdown over a magic item. Repeating this process for all of the map's 23 hexes gets the wilderness bulked out with a coven of witches, a gnoll chieftain and his shamaness, and a dragon named Sifu who recently woke up when he sensed the rift dungeon opened. He's old enough to know what's trapped down there and would prefer it to remain where it belongs. With that, our campaign area is packed full of quests the players can get into. Dealing with the marauding gnolls, joining or eliminating the cult, stopping the chieftain from harassing outlying homesteads, confronting the recluse Talonsting, and perhaps even defeating Sefu the dragon, and making off with his treasure are all adventures that the players might get up to and are all made using Knave's random tables. If you'd like to back Knave's second edition so you can follow along with this process and make your own campaign setting in under 12 hours, check the link to the Knave's Kickstarter in the description below. If you want to check out the adventure I created using this process and see all the prompts I used because I show my work, a link to this adventuring area, the recluse, and the rift is in the description as well. With all of that said, if you'd like to help me make more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.